The following lesson is linked to learning outcome two, reading and viewing. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to explain the meaning of a wide range of written, visual, audio and audiovisual texts. Learners should be able to recognize the writer's and or the character's viewpoint and give supporting evidence from the texts. This lesson also addresses the assessment standard which requires learners to explore and explain key features of texts and how they contribute to meaning. Learners should be able to recognize how word choices, imagery and sound devices affect mood, meaning and theme. Hi, I'm Charlotte. In this series of lessons, we are looking at studying poetry, and we have already established what poetry is made up of in terms of structure. In this lesson, we will take a look at two questions that we have touched on in previous lessons. Why write poetry? And how poetry is written? By the end of this lesson, you should be able to establish the poet's intention, work out the poet's message, and identify and work with comparisons. When you are studying poetry at school, you are often asked to identify the poet's intention and what his or her message is to the reader. In addition, you must also work with figures of speech that are used to convey imagery. But poetry is not only reserved for school exams. Here is a piece of poetry that I'm sure you will all recognize. I'm sorry, Mama, I never meant to hurt you. I never meant to make you cry, but tonight I'm cleaning out my closet. I'm sure that you know Eminem wrote this piece, and it illustrates an important aspect of why poets write. Now let's take a closer look at this piece and what qualifies these song lyrics to be poetry. The repetition is clear. The lines, I never meant to, appear twice, and then there is this comparison, cleaning out my closet. In terms of structure and imagery, these song lyrics are also poetry, and poetic language was used. Now let's think about why the poet, and in this case songwriter Eminem, wrote this. Many poets throughout history wrote about things that influenced them directly. Think about Wilfred Owen during the First World War, or Shakespeare and his love sonnets. Think also of South African poets who wrote during apartheid, such as Sipu Sepamla. We will be looking at some examples of this protest poetry in the next lesson. Eminem's song is also an example of a poem written about something that affects the poet directly. In this song, he writes about his childhood experiences and his belief that his mother is not a good parent to him. Now, why do you think Eminem's work is so popular? It is because young people all over the world can identify with the feelings that he expresses about society's attitudes and modern lifestyle. I'm sure that you will find it easy to identify this poet's intention. Now, let's take a closer look at intention with this short definition. Poet's intention is the presumed reasons to explain why a poet has written a poem. The word presumed is used in this definition because we cannot say for sure what the poet's intention is. We can only imagine or guess or presume what it is. So Eminem's intention could be to hurt his mother or to purge his conscience or even just to appeal to the youth and make lots of money. But he could also be writing about how parents sometimes neglect their duty to their children. Now let's go back to the text and examine the last line. Cleaning out my closet. This line could have both a figurative and literal interpretation. Literally, it means to clear the junk out of your cupboards. But figuratively, this means to expose something. I'm sure that you have heard the expression to have a skeleton in the closet, meaning to have a secret. So when Eminem says that he is cleaning out his closet, he is going to expose something. Presumably, 
what he wants to say about his mother has been hidden and exposing it will hurt her. Now can you remember what a symbol is from our previous lesson? A symbol is an object that represents something else, an idea or a larger accepted understanding. The idea of something hidden or private is represented by the term closet. So closet is symbolic and helps to convey the message that even though it would be hurtful to expose his mother, he is still going to do it. Now let's look at a completely different poem with a completely different message and intention. See if you can guess what the message is here. The poet is Elizabeth Barrett Browning and I'm sure that you've heard this poem before. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach. It is fairly clear that her message is to a loved one and her intention is to express how much she loves this person. The message that she loves this person as much as it is possible to love is conveyed through the use of figurative language. Note this wonderful comparison between the extent of her love and the infinite reach of her soul. It is our job to understand the language and the techniques that poets use. And if we can do this, determining the poet's message and intention will be much easier. Now let's look at what figurative language is and some examples of figures of speech. Figurative language. Words and language are used to extend their meaning beyond the everyday and create more than surface meaning. Let's look at how another poet used language to go beyond the everyday. This is an extract from the poem The Birth of Shaka by Oswald Mtsali. His baby cry was of a cub, tearing the neck of the lioness because he was fatherless. I want to concentrate specifically on comparisons while we study this text. Let's take a look. What two things are being compared here? Well, the baby, Shaka, is being compared to a lion cub. So can you see the metaphor in Mitsali's lines? In a metaphor, the qualities of one thing are directly applied to another. It is as though the baby and the cub become the same thing. The cry of the baby is exactly the same as the cry of the lion cub. And the qualities of the lion cub are transferred to the baby. So the strength and ferocity of the lion become the description of the baby and his strong ferocious cry, blaming his mother for his lack of a father. This comparison is a good one, because if you know your history, you will remember that Shaka was an illegitimate child. So just like the lion cub, he was only raised by his mother. The next type of figurative language we will look at is often easier to spot. Simile, a comparison between two distinctly different things, indicated by the words like or as. To illustrate a simile, let's look at this line from the poem City Johannesburg. Death lurks in the dark like a blade in the flesh. Do you see the comparison here? Death is compared to a blade here. So the poet has used a threatening object, the blade in the flesh, to compare to death. Do you see that there is almost a double threat here? death that waits or lurks, and the knife. From our definition, we know that this is a simile because it uses the word like to draw the comparison. Now, this piece of poetry also contains another figure of speech that is used to draw a comparison. Personification is when a non-living thing is treated as if it has human qualities. Here, Sir Rote is giving death the ability to lurk or wait in secrecy like a human would. What type of people would lurk in the dark? Maybe murderers and thieves. 
So by using personification and simile, the poet is conjuring up a powerful image in our minds. In this lesson, we have highlighted some more things that you should look for when analyzing a poem. Let's recap what we've looked at. Poet's intention, the poet's message. Figures of speech that compare, like metaphor, simile, and personification. See if you can work out the intention and message of poems that you study in class. Also look out for figures of speech. They do not only occur in poetry, but if you pay attention, you will also find them in adverts and song lyrics. Join me for our next lesson when we will take a look at South African protest poetry. Until then, bye-bye.